mystery night? Because we made you fill out these sheets. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to say, I I'm impressed. You're not nearly as a whole as narcissistic as most of the Dominicans are. <laughs> You're not as, as full of yourself. Um, uh, but what are we getting at this? It's important to sort of have self-knowledge. So I thought, well, some, some of these are, are interesting. Um, some of them I, I can make out your names. Some I cannot. Uh, but, I do parkour. That's why you're awesome. R Ryan? <laughs> can we have a demonstration? Do it. Do you really? And of course, you, your biggest weakness is kryptonite. Crypton, I understand this. <laughs> the, the, uh, <laughs> and, and well, I can read this person's signature, no problem. But but I realize the secret that you're keeping, and that why you are awesome because you are Batman. So <laughs> so with that being the case, I, I don't want to reveal your secret identity. But as you mentioned. If the Lego movie is correct, everyone's awesome. So, this is this. The, the uh, all right, Matthew, Matt. I see you got secret ninja moves. All right, Napoleon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. I'm trying, trying to take my best Napoleon Dynamite impersonation. <laughs> I can't yeah. do it. Try dance. Yeah. 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 Okay, can you put soundtrack? And you are a son of the father, but I like the way you put it. God, I am your father. Okay, so, so we got the Star Wars motif going on. It, it, it's great. And uh, Hannah is, is her mom's and dad's favorite child. So, so, so we're, 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 glad, we're glad that you're aware of this. <laughs> oh, that's good. And, it, and one of my favorite series, I have great eyelashes. <laughs> Brother Paul. Yeah. The, uh, oh, some, some good ones. Uh, my name is cooler than anybody else's. I already have that, Anne Marie. That's mine. Right. So, so, so it is a cool name. Um, I'm a princess. I, I, I won't. I won't compete with that one. And Cameron's the drummer. So, so <laughs> these are. Uh, it's a, actually. I have to say, and, and some of the core team said the same thing, actually your responses were fairly actually edifying for the most part. You, you took this exercise fairly seriously, you, you weren't uh, just being silly. Uh, uh, even Matt's. It wasn't like, like the additional eight, nine that he added to it that he started to get silly. Okay, but, uh, <laughs> the, the, but this sort of self-knowledge is important. You have to know why you are great, why you are awesome. Um, you do need to know what your weaknesses are. And it's also helpful to know what other people think of you, to get a sense of how they perceive you, but also to try to get to the truth. Tonight's talk is about humility. <laughs> yeah. You got that? Right. Yeah. Come on, parkour. Yeah. The, the, uh, uh, the, but people often don't understand what humility is. Okay? And, and you're actually were pretty good, because most of you were actually, it might have been struggling to, to get at the points as to why you were awesome. And, and, and they're pretty good. You know, a lot of you recognize the son and daughter of God, all these things. And it's very true. But um, humility, at its heart, is about the truth. There, there is the danger of having sort of a false sense of humility. Yeah. Oh, I am not worthy. I am a word. Oh, put that camera away. You know, the, the, the sense that um, that to be humble, you have to be less than you are. Have you ever felt that way? When, when you're when you're trying. Okay, a few nods. When, when, when you feel like. You, you need to be humble that, that I have to be something less than I am. And that humility in the sense of this false humility, that being humble is in the light of God, that in order for him to be great, I have to be less than I am. 
Can, let me say that again. You can see how crazy this is. For God to be great, I have to somehow be less than I am. God made me. He's exalted. The more glorious I am. See, he made you. He made you to be great. He made you to be awesome. And, and you are. I mean, it, that's a word that's often just uh, overused. Awesome. Okay, yeah, well, everything's awesome. I, mean, I guess the Lego, I didn't see the Lego movie. So, 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 so everything is awesome? Is that, I don't know, is that it's a song? Who wants to sing it? <laughs> okay, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so, so, but awesome would be let a mortal flesh keep silence. You know, that's talking about all. Like standing in the presence of God and going, wow. You know, to, to, to somehow begin to wrap your mind around something that is incredible and, you know, your mouth just drops and it's, you know, wow. But that is you. Okay. God made you be that. He made you in his own image and likeness. And so sometimes, when you just stand in the presence of somebody and, and you, you get to know them or you get a glimmer to, to life and you, you can get a, a glimpse of the reflection of God in the other person. That's, that's all. It, it is awesome. Okay? And, and so, uh, in, that, in that sense, we should be able to see each other. And we're supposed to be striving to reflect God's image. Now, because we're meant to be great, we're meant to be holy, we're meant to be awesome. But to do this, we need humility. All right? And humility is seeing yourself in truth. Okay? So... I am six foot seven. I am the best athlete you have ever met. <laughs> Lean, mean fighting machine. Right here in front of you. Yeah. Why are you laughing? No, no. So, so, so you get the idea. I, I mean, if I believe that, you can tell I'm delusional. Right? So, so um, you know, that's, that's just untrue. When, when we're filled with ourselves and think ourselves as being greater, and think ourselves as being maybe being better than everybody else, um, there's also a way that we askew, that we think too highly of ourselves. But the reverse is just as soon as that false humility, thinking, you know, I'm no good. You know, all I do is get up here and, and stutter. Uh, I, you know, should have repeated first grade. I don't play with my friends. Uh, whatever it is. The, Humility is seeing yourself in truth. We often have the wrong idea of what humility is. But you, you can see, once you know this, it's actually in some ways easier to become humble. Okay? But to see yourself in truth is, is the reality that the only proper perspective is God's. Mm -hmm. to, to see yourself in truth as God sees you watching. Right? Uh, so, he knows your strengths. He, no one sees you as beautiful as your maker sees you. He sees you awesome. But he realizes all your mistakes and your failings. He knows what he made you. He knows what he made you for. So, so you have people that, that, that uh, might, might resist. If, if I thought, oh, I'm going to medical school, I'm going to be a great doctor, I'm going to cure cancer. Okay, so, so to, to, just being full of myself and, and refuse to listen to what God is calling me to, it's, it's going to lead to unhappiness. Does that make sense? Um, there's, I had a bunch of examples, it's all jumbled. What, what, um, and the Lord will teach you Humility. All right. So, uh, but later tonight you'll have the opportunity in your small groups to, to pray the little litany of humility. It's very dangerous. 
No, no, I mean it. There, there, there are certain things where, you know, if, if you pray with sincerity, uh, you'll learn things about yourselves. And this often takes the form of falling on your face. <laughs> okay? Uh, I, I mean, I'm just thinking of some of the examples I can do. So, I, mean, I, I was faith-filled, discerning my vocation. I can remember the one time just um, being sort of frustrated because my, my brother, the, the atheist, sort of you know, engaged in a conversation. And just being so frustrated. I don't know. Uh, it's hard necessarily to even explain even how that was, but j- just feeling so sort of inadequate, thinking that, you know, God, you, you gave me the truth, I know it, why can't I communicate it to him? And, and just sort of staying up all night, frustrated with that. Uh, just, just that sense of, of inadequacy. When the Lord is teaching me the humility, saying, you're not your brother's savior. I'm sending you out... You don't know yet, St. Patrick's. I mean, you're going to have a lot of people there. All right? But, but, um, but your brother, you've got to leave to me and to somebody else I've got to send. You know, so, so the humility. I often tell your parents, when you're a few years older, and if you've wandered away from the church, okay, and now if you do that, your parents are going to be uh, extremely frustrated and wondering, oh, what did I do wrong? Okay. And they, they pretty much seen this if you have older siblings, if, they, if they've wandered away from the church. But a parent's deep love for the, uh, their children is such that they want them to achieve happiness, not just in this life, but in the next. That's true love. And so to see them wander away from the faith is frustrating. And they don't know what to do. And they pray, I, Father, I've done everything I could. And... Father, I, I pray all the time. I say all these prayers. And my standard device tends to be the moms. You wonder what they're doing the confession all the time? You thought it was their sins? No. It was their children's. But, um, the, <laughs> the, the, uh, but my standard device is, you know, pray. Because, you know, you're a mom or you're a dad. And you want what's good for your child. Pray. But, but recognize that you can't be their savior. That, that's... That's Jesus Christ. Pray that God send somebody else into his or her life. Okay? Because all of a sudden, that takes on a, a form of, of humility. Um, the, now, you have to see yourself in truth. I think, what was it, a month or so ago, where we, we tried to pray for the Blessed Sacrament, you know, Lord, allow me to see myself as you see me. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, that prayer will change your life. Because you will grow in humility the more you see yourself as God sees you. You'll recognize yourself as being awesome and for the right reasons. Okay? Um, you, know, you have to sort of be in that in the cell of self-knowledge. Right? I mean, say, you know, I can say, you know, I've got a dry mouth now and a little bit of indigestion. I, I ate two salads tonight. Do you want to tell them why, Brother Paul? It is. It does it seem fair? Which one was the fat one? Right. So, 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 so you're going to be in self, self-knowledge. You know, you're just going to sort of realize it. But, but humility, you see yourself in truth and what God has blessed you with. And I mean, I, you've heard me go on. Just the gift of my priesthood and what I've seen. I mean, my goodness, what the Lord has done for me is awesome. What, I, what I've seen Him do, which is the privilege of being a priest. But... But this humility allows us to combat pride. And pride is the self-assertion of our own will over God's. And that underlines every single sin. There's not a sin that you do that doesn't have pride touching upon it. It's, you know, self-asserting your own will over God's. And that's what's, you know, that's the recipe for disaster. That's what's going to, you know, if we're going to end up in hell, that's what's going to bleed us there, is our pride. But humility fights that directly face on. And allows us to, to see ourselves in truth and to recognize our dependence upon God. That everything about ourselves, everything that's good about us, has in some way been given to us from God. And once we realize that, all of a sudden, we become open to what He wants to do. And it's very powerful. This is why the, the saints are humble. But they're humble in different ways. Uh, you know, you know, some, some, some of them have great sense of humor. Uh, you know, St. 
St. Philip Neri, just, just kicking the hat all, you know, they tried to make him a cardinal, so he kicked the hat all the way back to, to you know, the Vatican or wherever he's going. The, the, uh, there's lighthearted. Mo Mother Teresa. Yet here is a woman that all the news agencies were constantly reporting her. I, I, I mean, she was a celebrity. And yet she was very humble. And um, the secret of her humility, I, I, I was thinking of her when I was preparing for this because I once saw Mother Teresa. Okay. Actually, a lot of you put down, you know, what makes you awesome? Is you your eyes? You know, a whole bunch of you? Okay, mm -hmm. I see the smiles. You know who it is, yes. Uh, uh, but when I saw Mother Teresa, it, it, was, it was briefly, she looked right at me. I was just actually bringing up the gifts as a college student. And, and we had tried to go to the Mass where, where up in the upper church in the Basilica of the National Shrine in D.C. Some of you have been there. Uh, we were trying to go see her. And, and they, they were sneaking her out because she was such a celebrity down the elevator into the basement and through the back of the church. And, and that's why I was going out to bring the gifts. And uh, there she is, four feet in front of me. And she looks right at me. The deepest eyes you ever want to fall into. Hmm. Amazing. I mean, they're, they're dark. I guess they're brown, but they, they, they just look dark. Like you could fall into them. I mean, granted, I knew I was in the presence of holiness, but I tell you, those eyes. Amazing. Just, just amazing. Uh, you know, the, the window into the soul. But those were eyes that had looked upon Christ. And, and, and we saw this after her death. People didn't know it. You know, she was so joyful. That's what everybody saw. She had such amazing words for every person. But uh, she was in pain, in a certain sense. There, there was an, an absence because she saw God with her own eyes. And for 54, 56 years after that, he was gone. It was just the intense experience of Christ coming to her. That just her put her in rapture, and then for the rest of the time, except for one break in the middle, there was this absence. So she was moving on the love and the faith and knowing, knowing that Jesus was the blessed sacrament, insisting upon the holy hour, but not being able to feel his presence because of the intensity that she had felt it before. And this gave her this, this, this great humility, that she knew herself in God's eyes. She, she knew the intensity of Christ, and she knew just um, how precious was his love for every single person. It was just seeing herself in truth. Um, the, the, but how do we get it? No, I, I, I warned you about praying for humility. And I'm actually somewhat serious about this because be careful you know, what you pray for. If you ask for it, the Lord's going to send it. I'm going to tell you, just very briefly, a story that's radically changed my life. When I made a prayer, I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't want you doing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, so you're just going to try to follow along here. Maybe, maybe, maybe not, but try. All right. Um, it, it was after my, my sister died. She, she just died in a car accident. And um, I, I made a prayer, you know, asking, so, so really, something akin to asking for humility. It was a little bit different, but I'm just not going to tell you because I don't want you doing it. All right? Um, now, you'll hear other people, you need know, to be careful when people to tell you to, what to pray for. Just realize the Lord may answer it. And, and, and well, good. And, and, and this was well, good, but I wouldn't make the prayer ever again. Uh, but, but I knew it was answered because it was just what? Within two weeks of my sister dying, that. The, the girl is dating and shopping for rings for her. We had very, uh, you were very close. It was a long distance relationship, but we were very close, and it was very, it was very faith filled. It was, it was very wholesome and, and beautiful in a lot of ways. And she dumped me for another guy right after my sister died. So, so you know, it, it's being hit when you're down. But I, but I knew that for all that pain, that my prayers for the sake of my sister was being answered. But, you know, in a tremendous consequence because, you know, it helped me realize my, my real vocation. But the, uh, but 
But as a sort of tough lesson in humility, to, to know yourself in truth, and to see it, and have to see it, through the eyes of pain. But at the same time, you know, sort of depressed, I had to say, this was what I was going through at that time. But I knew it. You know, I didn't want to eat, but I forced myself because I knew what I needed to do. But there was, there was a joy that went through because I knew that God was taking care of my sister. Because it made it very clear to me in answer to my, to my prayer. So you can ask for humility, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you that in the next few days, you, you're going to experience it by falling flat on your face. And, and that's okay, but it's dangerous. So I'm going to tell you a good way of growing in humility, gently. All right. So. Thanksgiving. Giving thanks to God. I commend this to you as just a regular spiritual exercise. If you did this every day, if you just did it every day during Lent, it will change your life. If you spend a few moments, beginning and or at the end of the day, thanking God for whatever comes to your mind and making sure that every time it's different, okay? You know, you don't want to just get it, but I, I thank God for uh, mommy and daddy and brother Peter. Okay, so, so you, you, you don't want to fall into, into, into the same, same rhythm each time, uh, but rather to you know, thank you, Lord, uh, for my stuttering. That I recognize that you've taught me some humility and yet you still use me for preaching. Well, just like you did Moses, I recognize your power in my life. You know, thank you, Lord. You know, thank you for that annoying little brother that, that, that constantly, you know, pesters me. You know, it's, 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 but you know, thank you, Lord, that I'm so good at math. That I've done as well as I have. You know, uh, thank you, Lord, for my ninja skills. But that doesn't work. Right? Because you think you, you can't thank God for being, you know, six foot eight and a star athlete. Not unless you are. When you thank God, especially for the things in your own life, you're before God. You know He knows better than you do, so you have to be honest. You have to be true. There's, there's some soul searching that goes on here. But if you thank Him for it, not only are you seeing yourself in truth, which is the essence of humility, but you're thanking the one who is the giver of the gift. And uh, with, with that, your, your life will change. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because God has great plans for you. you you'll, you'll see it. The, the more you grow in a grateful heart, the more you'll see that God's mercy at work. I mean, you heard me say this a thousand times, right? God, God's mercy is when he reaches down to the misery, the suffering, the evil, the pain, and draws good from it. If you're docile in humility, you'll see it, and you'll also see how he's using you to do that in other people's lives. It's powerful. It's transformative. Uh, and, and you'll begin to see your own greatness, because you'll recognize God made you to be great. You'll see when he uses you, and think, that's awesome. That is awesome. You know, when I get to run out to a hospital, and the person's just ha hanging on, and, and when, when I anoint with oil, and you see, you know, just as I'm saying the prayers, the person says, dies right in my own hands. I think, my goodness God, you just used me. You held this person on so he would see the grace of the sacrament until I got there. This is awesome. It is. And then with that, in that, with that spirit of humility, you're able then to go in front of our Lord to see him and to recognize, God, you've given me the gift of faith. It's a greater gift. I mean, you know, a lot of times we talk about healings, miracles, stuff like that. No, the greater gift is that gift of faith. To not need any of that. To be able to see and look at him and recognize, Lord, you've used me, and there you are. What looks like bread, but the omnipotent and omniscient God. Let all mortal flesh keep silence. Any questions? Have I baffled you enough?
I think I'm out of time. So.